I'm Don Dugan Haas from the Paleontological Research Institution and its Museum of the Earth. I'm going to talk a little bit about where CO2 comes from, looking at a specific resource, gasoline. Americans burn 380 millions of gasoline on the average day. That's more than a gallon per person per day. Uh, wow. Where does that go? Well, first we need to know a bit about gasoline. A gallon weighs about six pounds, a little more than six pounds, so if you use ten gallons of gasoline in a, a week, where does that sixty pounds go? Up in smoke, you might say, which is indeed what happens, but we know that matter can neither be created nor destroyed, only changed in form. A little refresher of some middle school science there. Gasoline is a mixture of a collection of hydrocarbons. Uh, hydrocarbons are organic compounds made of hydrogen and carbon. On average, gasoline has a chemical formula something like C8H18, that's octane. And what do you get when you burn octane? Well, you get carbon dioxide and water. The chemical equation looks like this, and drawing it schematically, the molecules look something like that schematic representation and when you have that combustion reaction you recombine things and it looks something like this so you get um, from our initial octane molecule with 12 and a half oxygen molecules you end up with eight carbon dioxide molecules and nine water molecules and if we think about those eight carbon dioxide molecules, they end up weighing a bunch more than this octane molecule, which is the way it looks in the representation, because that's the way it is. So what? So the resulting carbon dioxide in water weighs more than the gasoline we started with. In fact, burning this six pound gallon of gasoline yields 19 pounds of carbon dioxide. Again, uh, Wow. And it's worth remembering that Americans burn 380 million gallons of gasoline a day. So that's about 7 billion pounds of carbon dioxide produced every day in this country just from burning gasoline. Oh, uh, wow. And we burn about 3 million tons of coal a day. The chemistry and mathematics are similar. And I'm closing with a question. Is it realistic to assume that changing atmospheric chemistry to this extent can be done without consequences? Think about that.